AP Human students, this is Ms. Safran, and I am going to go over how to write an FRQ, especially because now your 2020 AP exam is all FRQs. Yay! So let's get started. This is the same Nearpod that is embedded in Canvas, so you can either listen to this video and hear the explanation or go back and look at the Nearpod on your own. But I wanted to go through how to write an FRQ just to kind of jog some of your memories. It's been a while since we've written one and just what the task verbs mean and all that stuff. So first, a little bit of house cleaning for FRQs. Always write in complete sentences. You are in college and the reader assumes you're in college. So always write in complete sentences. No bullet pointing, no slang words, and if you are writing yours out with your handwriting, please make sure that it is legible and we can read it. No reading, no grade. Big change that happened in the 2020 update for AP Human Geography is what is called task verbs. In the past, there were several task verbs that students had to know what to do in the FRQ prompts. Now they've condensed it down to five verbs. So let's go over what each of these verbs make you do and think about how many sentences you would write per verb. So the first one, identify, indicate or provide information about a specific topic without elaboration or explanation. So identify verbs is where you're literally pointing out a country on a map or you're telling me what kind of agriculture that is, what kind of tool is that? Maybe what kind of language do you see on the picture? Usually you're going to have maps or pictures or countries involved in identify. And it's short, sweet, usually one sentence. You're done with that. The next task verb is define. Provide a specific meaning for a word or concept. So this is where you're giving a definition. And sometimes you might give one complex sentence, but make sure that your definition is full and complete. Sometimes it's good for you to put in an example just so that you know for sure you know what you're talking about, you, the reader knows what you're talking about, and you're getting that full point. But it's not necessarily that you have to always put an example with a defined task verb. All right, the next one, describe, provide the relevant characteristics of a specific topic. So for describe, you are painting the picture of what something is like. So if I asked you, describe the use of social media on a global scale you would give me the picture of how different platforms of social media are used on a global scale and maybe give me an example of how it's changed national policies, how maybe it's changed global policies, popular trends, folk culture, all that kind of stuff. The next one, compare, provide a description or explanation of similarities and or differences. So for compare, you really have to know your topic inside and out. And this is where you could use positive or negatives. You can compare maybe two people like Thomas Malthus and Esther Bostorov and their ideas. Maybe you compare a more developed country with a less developed country, but you really have to know what you're saying in this. For both of these, you might have about two to three sentences for these verbs. Sometimes you might go into four sentences. It really just depends on what the topic is. And then the last one is going to be explain. And this is the one you're going to see most often on any FRQ and most AP level classes are going to have you explain your response. So explain is provide information about how or why a relationship, process, pattern, position, or outcome occurs using evidence and or reasoning. And that last part, using evidence and or reasoning, is examples. So this is where you're really digging deep into what you know about a topic and you're providing examples to show the reader that you really know what you're talking about. This is also a great way to incorporate other units into that topic. So you can weave in and out multiple units that we've studied. So let's practice. Here's an easy FRQ of cats versus dogs. So here is the actual FRQ question. So you have two pictures, you have animal A and animal B. So right off the bat, you should probably have an idea what unit this is studying. Obviously this is not AP human related, it's just practice. But if this was an AP human question, you would need to know, is this farming, is this population, is this culture, what is it? Always read the questions first. So question one, which picture is an example of a dog? Which picture is an example of a cat? Right there, that is identify. It's asking you to identify which one is a dog, which one is a cat. 
Number two, define what a dog or cat is. Number three, describe what a dog or cat is like. Number four, compare one similarity and one difference between dogs and cats. And number five, explain why cats are better pets than dogs or vice versa. So you can see how the task verbs are used in this FRQ. So let's go through this. So this is how you would answer this FRQ if you were, if you had this for the AP test. So part one, we already said is identify. So you would have to know animal A is an example of a dog. You would actually need to write that fully out in complete sentences. Animal B is an example of a cat. Boom, you got your point. Number two, part two, a dog is a domesticated carnivorous mammal that typically has a long snout with an acute sense of smell, non-retractable claw, and a barking, howling, or a whining voice. Okay, so for that, you can tell that the person has looked at that definition. On the AP test, you're not going to have anything to help you look up anything. Even if you're taking it at home, there are ways that they are going to prevent cheating so that you aren't going and looking up items. So you really have to know what you're talking about. So you might say that a dog is a mammal that typically has a long snout, maybe has a very powerful sense of smell, has paws, barks, it howls. It's also used as a common pet in the household or vice versa with the cat. So your answer might not be as sophisticated as this one, depending on what the topic is. Okay, the next one, dogs love to play, wag their tails, chase after balls, lick their owner's faces. They range in size from just a few pounds to over a hundred pounds, yada, 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 yada. You can really see how this part of the FRQ, you can tell is a describe, compare, explain portion. It definitely gives you a lot more information than this definition part or that ID part. And then the last part, looking at, um, again, describe, compare, explain, a little bit longer of a response. And then the last part, definitely a little bit longer of a response. So you can see that those task verbs are going to be really, really important. So moving on to a sample FRQ, this is an actual AP FRQ and I, AP human FRQ, and I'm doing this in Word document so that you can see what some possible answers would be. So first, always read the prompt. It says an important conceptual tool of geography is scale. So right there, that should be your clue. Scale is your vocabulary word. Um, and so you gotta really know what scale is. The first part, it goes straight into explain. Explain two meanings of scale. So we have to really think about what is scale. Well, when I think of scale, I think of the distance of places on a map. So it, that's how it could be used for geography. I also think of describing things in relative to other things based on size. So that could be local scale, national scale, regional scale, or global scale. So if I was going to put this into a sentence or a few sentences, I would say scale could be used for multiple meanings or tools for geography. Scale is a tool on a map to show distance. Um, a map projection to real world distances. Scale can also be used to compare concepts at different sizes or different sizes for example you can have a concept at a local scale national scale or global scale so in essence of time, my answer is not the best, but it does hit basically what the question is saying. And I would get, as a trained reader, I would probably give that response right there at least 
one if not two points because they're just giving me the bare basics of what scale is. Obviously, you could go into a little bit more explanation using examples, elaborating a little bit more. All right, this next one, compare the use of small scale map with the use of large scale map. Give a specific example of each. So this is where you have to know what is large scale versus what is small scale. Well, large scale is gonna be zoomed in. Okay, so how would you use a large scale map if something is zoomed in? Well, you're looking at local things like setting up a parade route, maybe setting up a running race, maybe barricading a small neighborhood, uh, using local authorities. Small scale is gonna be more zoomed out. And so how would you use small scale? Well, with the coronavirus, we're using small scale maps to look at how the coronavirus has affected the world on a global scale. That would be small scale. So again, you gotta think of scale as a fraction. Okay, so the bigger the fraction, the larger the scale. The smaller the fraction, the smaller the scale. All right, and then the last one, explain the concept of local global continuum as it relates to scale. So again, this is where you have to know what is local global continuum, okay? And then how does it show scale? So local global continuum is how things relate locally to globally on a basis. So how we have local government, we have national government, we have global government. How do we have local education? How do we have national education? How do we have global education? How do we have technology on a local scale, national scale, global scale, so on and so on. So you can come up with a lot of different examples of that. Um, and again, it's just elaborating. Do you know these vocabulary words? And even if you don't know the vocabulary words, could you figure it out, right? Like local to global is, a type of scale, right? We're going from very small, like in your face, like where you can see it, all the way to global where things are zoomed out and you can see it on a worldwide. That idea of continuum means it's a spectrum. And that idea of how do we see things change as the size changes. So again, even if you don't know the exact definition, you can still figure it out by breaking down the word and using some of those test strategies. So this is one of your sample FRQs. Your main FRQ for the AP exam will have seven parts. All FRQs are worth seven points. So right here, we probably would have gotten about four points out of that FRQ. Usually your explain, compare, describe verbs are gonna be worth more points than your identify and define. So that just kind of helps you remember that. So that's it for how to write an FRQ and a sample FRQ question. Go ahead and continue on with the module. There's some other FRQs that you're gonna be doing um, and we're just gonna practice a lot so you're ready for the AP exam. All right, have a good day, bye.